I just got in my Tesla and I realized there is a new software update available. So let's take a look. Do you store harpoons or other sharp objects in your Tesla? Check the link below. Just for your information, this is a 2021 long range Tesla Model 3 with hardware 3 on board. It also has the Intel Atom processor, the slow one. So it does not have Ryzen and it does not have hardware 4. So neither of those. This is a hardware 3 car. You can see it if we go here and we go into the cameras here. You can see these, um, these cameras are hardware 3 cameras. And hardware 3 cameras are not as good as the hardware 4 cameras. Okay, so we have vision speed limits. Vision speed limits now leverages your car cameras to detect speed limit signs to improve the accuracy of speed limit data on highways and local roads. Detected speed limits will be displayed in the driver visualization and used to set the associated speed limit warning. This is uh, the speed limit warning is something I have disabled. In 2024 cars, you need to disable it uh, each uh, drive. That's EU regulations. So finally using cameras for speed limits. Let's test this out, but let's first go through the list of the updates here. YouTube music, if you use that, that's uh, fantastic news for you, I guess, since the car has no CarPlay. Parental controls, so you can disable the maximum speed, you can set it to chill mode and uh, get alerts on forward collision warnings and curfews and stuff. That's great for parents who lend out their cars. Navigate to sub-destinations, so that would be, for example, a sub-destination uh, at an airport would be a terminal. So to terminal A, B, C or terminal 1, two, three, instead of just the airport. Great update. Weather forecast and air quality. I can also see that there has appeared a sun up here, which indicates the current weather. Your vehicle uh, status bar now shows the local weather conditions alongside the temperature. When air quality is poor, your vehicle uh, also shows an uh, AQI, uh, air quality index symbol and index value. Tap the temperature on the touchscreen to see details about the local weather forecast, such as the weather conditions, highs and lows of today and chance of rain requires premium connectivity. So we can see here that uh, we have the air quality index, which is good. And uh, we also see uh, the temperature throughout the day, which is great. Schedule uh, charge and preconditioning. I'll go into this menu uh, soon, but you could, so now you can um, schedule and the charge and preconditioning in a much easier way than before. Before it was uh, kind of clunky, now they have redesigned the menu, so I'll take a look. There is also new functionality. Security improvements, just security improvements and other updates, some games. Redesigned the climate panel, uh, panel which is new now. So you have this uh, simpler uh, design and uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to access stuff. I don't like that this is on top here. It was here before, so I guess it's closer to the driver. Uh, by that I mean like dog mode and keep climate and the camp mode. It was there before, now it's there. Uh, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, auto recirculation, these ones are here. Yeah, it's okay. And uh, control search now surfaces climate related features and navigation when searching for an address. No, it won't show me the weather at the location, I guess. Okay, let's drive. So in this area, it indicates 30 kilometers per hour as the speed limit. That's the correct speed limit at this location. So we are off to a good start. Here is a very, very strange uh, sign. So here it says that we are leaving the 30 zone, but entering a new, uh, not 30 zone, but a 30 uh, kilometers per hour speed limit. So this is a very strange sign. And it shows up here as uh, a 30 speed limit sign, which is the correct sign. And here it changed to 50 briefly, which is correct. You come out on a new way in Norway, it's 50, if there are houses around but then it read the 30 sign immediately and changed. So here is a 50 speed limit and it changed to 50, which is correct. 
everything is correct so far because when you enter a new road in Norway it's 50 if there are uh, like houses around and 80 if there are no houses around so that was actually correct so let's see how it goes uh, as we drive up here it's still 50 and here is a new speed limit sign that says 50 which just uh, reinstates that the speed limit is 50 here this is more important for other cars that have this uh, mandatory speed limit warning every time you go for a drive 40 and it changes to 40 perfect i'm actually pretty impressed so far and it absolutely does use vision we are getting up to a 50 zone here and we will see how fast it changes there we go it changed to 50 it changes right before the sign perfect location before it changes Let's uh, try to get uh, out on the highway and test digital uh, speed limit signs and see if it can see those. Okay, let's uh, try to get out on the motorway and find some digital speed limits that we have uh, at many countries in Europe use those. Uh, when you get on the road and there are no speed limits and there are no houses. So now it says 60, so it doesn't use the GPS to determine that we are in an 80 zone right now. So this is a failure. Okay, first digital speed limit sign, 100. Let's see. It read it. It read it. At least. Yeah, at the GPS level, I don't know. Okay, let's uh, get into autopilot here. Because this might uh, actually trigger phantom braking when it reads the wrong speed limits. But it got it right. Regardless, it got it right. It uh, turned to 100 uh, exactly when we drove past the digital speed limit sign. So let's just skip to the end of the tunnel because there is a new 80 digital speed limit sign and see if it uh, changes at, at the correct time. We are starting to come to the end of the tunnel here. It says poor GPS location accuracy because we are of course deep inside a mountain. But it still shows 100 kilometers per hour as the speed limit. There has been multiple digital signs on the way, but it still shows the correct speed limit here. It doesn't pick up from any other road that goes over the tunnel once it gets uh, GPS uh, GPS uh, satellites in. And of course with the Tesla system as well. Lots of problems. Okay, now we are braking. We are braking, I don't know why. I think it might uh, pick up um, these... Um, tunnel lights which we use to indicate which lanes are open uh, as uh, traffic lights or something because now it's supposed to stop on traffic lights and there are lights in the tunnel ceiling here that it might pick up I didn't break there anyways here is an 80 sign digital 80 sign coming up and there we are past it there it changed immediately it doesn't change my speed so uh, that just shows that the phantom braking is not due to the speed limits Because uh, it did change to 80. I was still at 100. I had to adjust manually uh, Like I expected to do, but it did break for something in the tunnel. So that's not fixed and um, I need to rewind the, the footage and uh, see why and what happened So I've driven past a few uh, digital speed limits uh, right now which indicated 70 kilometers per hour and the system had no problems detec detecting them immediately. It's difficult for me to know what's in the GPS or not, but uh, let's see here, here is 70. It doesn't seem to pick it up on the screen, but uh, I think it might only do that in 50, 60 zones where we are slow enough. So the phantom braking issues that we uh, see in Norway might not actually be solved. I have to test it on the phantom braking road, which is a highway stretch in Norway where every Tesla owner, regardless of their system, AP1 even, brakes for random reasons. So it's a cursed stretch in eastern Norway. So I really want to try that now with this new update. But I'm sure someone else will do it before me, because I'm uh, right now in western Norway. In conclusion, is the speed limit recognition fixed in Norway? Seems so, at least for everything I tried today. On the other hand, is the phantom braking issues in Norway fixed? No, I don't think so, because we had an issue in the tunnel like we have done before. But it requires more testing.
Anyways, it was nice to get out and see how this system works. And I think we learned that it doesn't need to show on the display that it reads the speed limit. It reads it anyway. And it does it with the cameras on board the vehicle. It does not use GPS speed. That's my um, theory. And also the digital speed limit, it reads it uh, fine it seems, which is very very nice. Major upgrades from when I last tested this, then we had major issues. All the other updates are uh, nice additions like the weather, like uh, the small refinements here and there and the uh, schedule menu is very very nice. I do like these uh, updates. Thank you so much for watching my video. I do hope that you will uh, leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on these uh, updates and uh, I might reply to you. Anyways, have a great rest of your day and we will talk later. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and videos that are not like this, you can subscribe to this channel. I see a lot of people that uh, watch my videos that uh, don't subscribe. So please leave uh, any feedback in the comments and I'll try to improve.